um, this is like a deep, very deep question. And actually there are some spiritual traditions where they, I don't know if you guys heard, but he said, well, if I am trying not to identify with thoughts and feelings and not to hook into them, to associate with them, then how do I know my identity, who I am, who am I without this identifying with this phenomena, right? So there are some uh, spiritual teachings that the path, you know, there are different paths up the mountain of peace and okayness and truth, different ways, you know. Uh, but there are some paths, they are like, they're saying, hey, the solution to our problem is to find out this answer, to experientially get to who am I? <laughs> and these sages, they say that if you experientially go to for this and find out who you are, then you are you are good. Um, and actually, they have this even question called self-inquiry, where self this self-inquiry goes with meditation. So as we meditate and mind is quiet, more quiet and like witnessing. And then as the things are quiet, there's this technique. I don't want to do it with you now, but this you throw this question, who am I? Or the other question is, what am I? Or the other question is, what is aware right now? What is aware of my experience right now? So you throw this question, and then you just observe. Whatever will come up, the first of all, the, the mind will say stuff, will say, for most people, if they're new to this, they'll be like, well, I'm a man, I'm a man. I'm a white man, I'm a Romanian. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm better than you guys, or I'm, you guys are better than me or something, or I'm, something wrong with me, I have problems in relationship, I, or I don't know. Or, you know, because I've read a lot of deep spiritual books, who am I? It will come, I am spirit. I am consciousness. I am spirit. Okay. So anyway, the, the teachings say that whatever comes, this is a thought. I'm obviously not a thought. I'm aware of this thought that says I am a man. I'm aware of this thought. So therefore, I'm not this thought. Then who am I then? Oh, I am aware. I, I, I am divine presence. This is a good thought. It's kind of divine presence. The instruction is, hey, this still is a thought. This is a very nice thought, though. Very deep thought. <laughs> this thought comes and goes. I, I don't go. I remain. They have a secondary question here. It's like this thought comes. I am divine presence or I am an asshole. Next question is, okay, see, this is a thought. I'm aware of it. To whom does this thought appear? Right? This thought appears to... To whom does this thought appear? All these questions are like, make you like the mind like a dog. Like, hmm? Like, hmm? <laughs> Which is actually is meant to like short circuit the mind. It's like a coin. To whom does this thought appear? I don't know, man. To me, what the fuck? It's to me, me. Okay, who am I? Ah, uh, fuck. I don't know. So anyway, there is this uh, questions, but you know you have to stay with it and this or that. And part of what I'm doing, there is some aspect of it. I don't want to go into what am I at the beginning. But I'm going to tell it to you which they don't recommend to do that. They don't recommend because then there's a danger that you're going to take this with your mind and then you are going to make it a belief. But it's still, it's good. Um, so if all the thoughts come and go, they change all my life. And the feelings change all my life. And the obvious sounds and smells change all my life. And I have noticed a bunch of times that there is something here 
although invisible, that is always here. It's always awake. It's always uh, uh, noticing. There is this quality of noticing that hasn't changed. And, you know, if I am tasting this, some lemon, of course, these are thought lemon, but, you know, it's a taste. That which is tasting, yeah, there's the taste of lemon, and that which is tasting is the same that tasted my bottle. Fuck that, because I don't think I was breastfed. <laughs> Let's not go there. But that which, <laughs> which is uh, the taste of the first ice cream, you know? That, mm. So that, that which is aware, which doesn't come and go, but also, don't believe me, try to verify this. That which is, a, that which tasted my first ice cream and that which tastes now, hasn't changed at all. I kind of verified this. I verified this, that it hasn't changed at all. It hasn't aged. This body changed as a little boy and now as a young man and now it's getting older and it's going to get more, more older, you know? And I talk to old people. They're like, oh my God, it's unbelievable. I look in the mirror and it's just doesn't feel like me. I feel the same when I was 14. I feel it's still me and I look in the mirror. What the fuck? Okay, so the these teachings point to the fact and they say this thing, which we need to verify, is that we are that which is aware. Our real identity, our true identity is we are this presence, which is spirit, which is not affected by any thoughts and feelings. And this is ever present. That's what the teachings say. You can verify that. They even go even further. They say that this, pre this, this presence, which is aware right now, in everybody, it's not like, oh, I only I have it because I have done work and I'm special. Uh, no, I like, you guys are aware now, you know? You hear, that which hears, that which is aware right now, that is this presence that is we all have it. <laughs> Actually, we all are it. Yeah, it is due to this presence that we are aware of anything. Uh, first, there is this, there is this, I'm aware, and then I'm aware of sounds, I'm aware of my mother's milk, I'm aware, like, well, you know, at first, I'm, uh, the, the awareness is primeval, primordial. Now, the teachings say, this comes first, and then the body, and then the mind. And this comes first, and then the brain. In our uh, scientific paradigm, that we inherited, even if we don't believe it, but we we believe it, <laughs> uh, is that the consciousness is a product of the brain, and only complex nervous system brains can produce presence. That's what science believes. And then cats have presence and this or whatever, and only some people have it, some people don't have it. So. The problem with that and the, the thing that if, if you hit me with a two by four over the head, the assumption is that the presence stops and then I'm died. So the belief, the assumption we inherited, which is a belief which creates suffering, is that that which is aware, which is what we call I, the real I, what deserves to be called I, because I see, I hear, I feel, what feels is this presence. The inherited belief is that this presence is dependent of the body and a product of the body. Therefore, it is limited and perishable. That's what we all have. The teachings, they say that this presence is what we are. That which is aware of thoughts and feelings and constantly change, that doesn't change. That is not depending on the body. The body dies, this remains. This has been through many a body. This presence is not even mine. Actually, it's only one presence. 
Now it gets more uh, deeply mystical and non-dual. People, some of you are in non-duality or something, but the idea is that it's not that we have we don't have it's not that we have 11 awarenesses here inside our brains the teachings they say that actually there's only one awareness there's only one awareness that exists in the whole world that is aware through 10 bodies So the teachings say that we are this aware infinite spirit and in it there is absolute peace and love and immortality. And if we really, really, really seen this and verify this, where will our problems be? If we have really seen and verified that this presence is indestructible and unlimited and is already fulfilled from within, and no woman, no matter how much I believe that a woman is going to make it right for me, the teachings say that the, what I'm looking for, that state of fulfillment and okayness is within this presence. So that's the answer to your question. And this work we are doing to meditate and to witness thoughts and feelings and process our pain body and our limiting beliefs is in the context of what I said. Which is hopeful. I mean, this is kind of good news. This is the good news, right? <laughs> However, what they say in these teachings, um, they say, hey, don't make this some other religion and now believe this because it's not going to hold when there's friction or suffering you need to do the work that becomes yours you know you verify it yeah and the first step in these teachings to no longer all the time identify all the time with phenomena all the time every day because we have no chance to discover what we are all of this but in this module now, I'm less, I'm I'm going to be less going into what you asked me, although it's very important, because it's not so practical. It's more practical to learn how to witness and to discover our own limiting beliefs. And what is the belief I in connection to my mommy? I have to be nice, I have to be good, I can't be myself, and I have to reject her because I don't like her. Stay away from me, stay away from me, leave me alone. And with my daddy, I'm afraid of him, I'm afraid of him, and I can't be myself. And I have to be perfect, and I shouldn't make mistake, and I have to be careful, and definitely I should control myself all the time. Yeah? So these are my programs that I inherited from being raised by mommy and daddy, who were actually very good as compared to almost all my clients that I had my parents were like awesome man so it's not very practical to go into I am universal divine consciousness and or even to go into hey let's cultivate high vibration if I have all these programs being stirred all the time you know so I am interested more like hey can we learn to witness a little bit and discover our programs with mommy and daddy that play out in our relationship. The fact that our relationship are difficult is because I have mommy and daddy inside me. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I want to lessen this, the, the increase ability to witness, decrease resistance to feelings, identify our core beliefs, and start deprogramming them. And this way our, our system will get more purified and will get more higher frequency naturally. And, and then we can go deeper into deep like enlightenment things.